<laughs> Come on, commit. This is serious. You should do it. England boxer. Tell us from club boxer to England boxer to GB boxer. Tell us that process, what it takes. So first for, for your club boxer, obviously just start training with your club. Come at minimum, we always said it was three times a week. So when I first started, I only came and I watched my, like James run around and I used to run around the gym, not really took it, I didn't really take it serious. And then at eight years old, obviously I sat down with you and we was like, right, I want to box. So if it changes then, the training picks up, I've got to take it serious. And it was always minimum three times a week, come to the gym and train. But for me, I was there every night anyway with you and with James. I think it was always going to be like, it was never going to be three times a week. And then, so the training picked up a lot from then. And then as soon as I was old enough to fight, it stepped up again. So the runs came involved. I was in the club every night with you, with the other coaches, up until I think my fifth fight. And then when I got into England, it was a step up again because the training had to increase. So where I was a club boxer, I was only training. I didn't have to do runs every single day. But as soon as I got into England, it was getting up at half five in the morning to run before school, take it just that extra step to make weight and to get picked for the opportunities to go to the Europeans. And with England, it was three day camps for periods of eight weeks at a time. So running up to the Europeans, you'd be with your club majority of the time. And then you'd just be eight weeks, you'd be with England every weekend, three, three, like for three days, doing sparring, bits of technique, and then the rest would be with your club, which would be normal training. And obviously GB now is a full time. So I'm there every single week. I'm there more than I am with club boxing. You travel with GB a lot more. You get a lot more experience with the abilities of boxers that you're going to spar and train with. And that's basically your new club. You're training three times a day, every single day while you're there. So the intensity goes up a lot more with GB as well. And then since you've been, what, 13, I think it was, when you made England? So obviously everyone sees that you get to fly around the, the world, all over the place, and to beautiful places and, and jet setting around. Um, one of the biggest things I always get asked, or oh, what a lifestyle she's having and that lot. So I always sat on a beach drinking cocktails and then go for a little run and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think... This is the thing that everyone gets confused of, and I think I put it across like, I'll go away and I'll put the good sides on, so I'll put everything that I do there where I'll put the views on like social media and I'll show everyone like how amazing it is. But I think everyone gets a very a different picture than what it actually is. And I, I am lucky, like we do get to go to amazing places and I've been to loads of countries that are beautiful and people wish they could go to like America twice a year like I have been this year. But the reality, the reality of it is, I can't say that word. Reality. Reality. The reality of it is, <laughs> it's not that. So you go there half the time. You're in hotels or your room or wherever you're staying. The accommodation. You don't go to the beach. You don't go to water parks. You don't go to see all the sites that normal people. Even when you go to a country, half the time you're not in. Like when I go to Bulgaria, you're not in the holiday. You're not in sunny beach. You're in the mainlands where there's not much to do. You're there for a job, so you're there to train. You train three times a day off. It's competition. You, you just rest all day until you fight. So a lot of people think I'm lucky in that, but reality is I'm just in a room all day until... So you're not on the change. beaches, you're no. spending a lot of time in airports. one and... rest day. A, a week if we're there, two weeks. And we'll get one rest day where we can go out. But the rest, we're there for a job at the end of the day. We're there to box. We're there to train. We're there to get something out and training so, camps will be what will they assist off like how many so, sessions yeah, will you be so looking for a training camp so we'll say the american one i've just been on we'll be running for, for the first week was like running and s and c and bags and pads and then the second week was just sparring so it was like it was tracked like a competition so you're making weight still as if you was going to fight you'd be sparring like you'd have gym bouts you'd have technical like sparring sessions you'd still be running you'd still be doing s and c you'd be incorporating everything into it to get so you're not chocolate. having donuts and knickerbocker no, gourds and burgers, <laughs> milkshakes. It was chicken and veg and making weight. So my memory is obviously not great, but I think it's testing here now. Is it 44 wins? Uh, 44 bouts. 43 bouts. 
43 bouts, 42 wins. So we lost one bout. Yeah, um, 2016. 2016 against Russia, European final, your first European final. Um, how did that loss, what, what, what was the reaction, the change? What, what did we have to do? So at the time I was only, I'd have been 15 when I lost that, 14, 15. It was my first year junior, my first Europeans. I was undefeated until then, I had 14 fights, won 14, which is very rare, like in our gym anyway, and I think across England it's very rare, like a lot of people do that as an amateur anyway, to go that many. So for me, like it was a big loss and it wasn't a loss a lot of people lose at a club fight at a local leisure centre and they can go out and they can cry to them with dad. I was obviously in the European final where you lose and it's, boxing's my whole life. So I lost and I couldn't cry in the ring, I couldn't show anything, I had to just be respectful and be like, yeah, because at the end of the day I'm representing my country so I couldn't give a bad show of myself. But I remember get that loss, I got out of the ring and I went straight to the toilets. I had the medal ceremony in 15 minutes and I didn't want to do the medal ceremony. I just went to the toilets and for that 15 minutes I cried my eyes out and I, I've got photos on the medal ceremony of me trying not to cry and just trying to get the silver medal and I remember which was a massive achievement you know this was a massive achievement, you know, a massive achievement. A massive achievement and at to that get time, all I saw it was is a loss I didn't see it I'm second in Europeans I didn't see it like second in Europe I didn't see that I just saw it as a big loss and I've lost and it wasn't a gold medal so to me it was nothing it was I've not done anything I've come out here and I've lost it doesn't matter what I've done. And that's the winning mentality. Yeah, and I think for a week, I think after the fight, we always joke about it now, a week I was the worst I've ever been. I didn't want to, I remember coming to the gym, I couldn't train properly, I felt my confidence went, everything went just from that like one loss. But now I look at it like years down the line and I'm so grateful for that loss. I am happy that I've got that loss because for me, I learned so much more from that loss than I'd learned from any of my wins. And I think if I never had that loss then and I won that fight and I won that Europeans, would I have gone on to win everything I've won now and to be where I am now? Because you unbeaten since then and that. Yeah, like, and that obviously the loss was a little bit controversial, but yeah. you know, if, if, yeah. if watched it back, it probably lost yeah, the first back, round. I learned a lot from that as well. With, I was very daunting going to that fight. As soon as I knew I had Russia in that final, I went into that fight not confident. I went into that fight thinking, oh no, Russian, that means they're very, very good. Like, you've got to be good to beat a Russian. And I went in there very, with hardly any confidence. Probably with the mindset that I'm going to lose anyway. And I think it took me a full round to even get into the fact that, what, what am I doing? Because I knew I lost the first round. And it took me to like, get in the corner thinking, hold up a minute, this girl is actually, I can beat this girl if I actually put, if I did something about it. And I actually tried to add confidence in myself. And obviously it was a little too late. And obviously then, since then you've boxed Russia another boxed three Russia times and, beat it, and yeah. then beat them three so times. I think, and I think I've learned a lot from that loss because, and without that loss, I don't think I'd be where I am now. And I think the mentality of England has changed as well. Yeah. So before you'd go to England, would go to tournaments thinking Russia is the Russia big is thing. And now, now you go to the tournament with England, it's we're the top ones. Like yeah. you've got to be England. Like we are the best. Like we deserve to be here. That's why you were here. And I yeah. think that's very good. So um, I've been lucky that I've worked around and, and close because of you and that lot with decent top athletes yeah. and that lot. And the thing that comes across to me is a lot of it is they're so focused and that lot and they have these goals and that lot. How, how do you work with that for your goals and how, and how does that work with you? Um, for me, goal setting is a very big thing in our training. Uh, every year we'll sit down and we'll look and we'll say, right, what's coming up this year or what's happening this year? Is this when I was younger, is this year my year or not? Because I remember sitting down and you telling my brother, like, next year ain't going to be your year, James. Like, you're just not at that level yet, but we're going to throw you in the deep end. We're going to do that to get the experience. You're not going to win everything, but we're building up for the next goal. And I think that was a very big... I always remember saying the year of my nationals was going to be my year, 2015. And you was like, that, our goal that year is just to win the national title. And we worked our way up to that. So I think we've always had little goals and I think that's very important to... Everyone has a big goal like the Olympics, and which is amazing to have. But I think the little goals are just as important. Little stepping stones to get where you need to be. And I think every athlete should have that just to keep pushing and keep them motivated as well to keep... So have that, yeah. big, have that big goal, have that big goal. but have your short have ones, short, middler, um, mid mid review it all the time. Yeah. See 
how close you are from it, how far away you are from it. So obviously now that uh, for the last few years yourself and, and your best mate Simran, your partner in crime, yeah. become these role models, you've done handing out at, at internationals and you've handed out at nationals and you do quite a lot, we, we sort of push and you do quite a lot of going to gyms, working with female up and coming so boxers and house yeah, house parliaments and you've done these Zooms. So what advice would you give to these next up and coming young boxers and that lot so if you could give two three four advice what would they be I think you the main thing is you've got to love what you do if you fall out of love with any sport or anything in life you're not going to give you 100% and boxing isn't something you can do if you're not going to give 100% because it's a dangerous sport everyone knows that so I think you've always got to love what you do you've got to love where you're at if you're not at the club you're not in love with or something's not happening with training your training's not right it's going to affect everything so always love what you do always have 100% heart in it, trust who you're training with, like trust your coaches and that, listen to them. And also, always remember there's someone out there bigger and better than you. Like, you might win a national title, you might win a European gold, but you're at the top now. So once you get to the top, it's, it's hard to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay at the top. And I think that's the main thing. A lot of people can come win such a big title, which we've seen in the past with boxers, win a big title and then go on to do nothing. And I think if you want to stay at the top, you've got to remember it's even harder to, to maintain that spot.